You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hi, I'm Bridget, and this is my co-host, Shani. And we're from Romance at a Glance. We wanted to drop by and let you know that this podcast isn't for kids. Katie and Nathan curse about as much as we do. And if that's not your thing, we totes get it. We never yuck anyone's yum. But in this case, this isn't the show for you. If you do like a little swearing with your podcast, then you are going to love our show, where we review all genres of romance novels. Expect 1,000% honest reviews, spontaneous singing, funny anecdotes, and naughty language. New episodes of Romance at a Glance drop every Friday. Now, enjoy Queen's Podcast. Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queen's Podcast, the show about badass women in history. Nathan! Katie! How's it going? It's going pretty good. I am... Reading about women in history, sipping a cocktail, and talking to you. What else could I want? Yes, I like (laughs) the answer. Good answer. Survey (laughs) says. (laughs) How are you? Good. Uh, Enjoying this delicious cocktail that we're having today. Oh my gosh, this is really, really nice. Yeah, I really like this one. I accidentally put mine in the freezer because I made Mm -hmm. it earlier, and I was like, oh, surely it won't freeze. It did. It's like a solid piece of ice with booze in it. Yeah, so now you've just got a boozy slushy. That's great. Yes, it's kind of it's kind of amazing. <laughs> so today we are here to talk about the Duchess of Devonshire, the bitch jo- with a big old hat. Yes, <laughs> Georgiana Cavendish, Duchess of Devonshire. Um, today, our shout out is to our friend Heather, who's been requesting this for three and a half years. <laughs> so, <laughs> she finally gets what she wants. <laughs> she finally is getting her episode on Georgiana. I've heard it pronounced Georgiana. Georgiana. I think well, I, we might get to it later, but I think it depends on um, how posh you are with how you say it. <laughs> but we can say Georgiana. Yeah, that's Yeah, I think Georgiana. it's Georgiana. Uh, Ge- it looks like Georgi- Georgiana. It looks Georgiana. Like, <laughs> like when I look at it, I see Georgiana. But, yeah, but, but I, I watched the Duchess and they said Georgiana. Georgiana. Mm-hmm. So Nathan, tell us about the drink that you've come up with for Miss Georgiana. <laughs> <laughs> I made, it's called the Darling Duchess. Um, and it is watermelon. So I took like some big chunks of watermelon, mm-hmm. threw that in a blender, threw some, some ice in it, one part rum, dark rum one part light rum and then a squeeze of lemon and lime and then blend it together and then you've got your darling duchess i love it i love this cocktail but i love watermelon yeah Uh, so it's yeah this is i am into the darling duchess um (laughs) so georgiana has gone down in history as a pretty scandalous of having a pretty scandalous life so let's get into her she was born June 7th, 1757. And so we actually know her birthday. We know her birthday. And she's a Gemini. <laughs> yeah, so even better. Watch out. <laughs> and she she really is a classic Gemini, too, in yeah. my opinion. She's mm-hmm. a very classic Gemini. She kind of reminds me of Empress Cece in a little bit. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I can see that. And was Cece a Gemini? I don't remember. Ooh, I don't remember. I don't remember, but... Uh, she reminds me a lot of her. Yes, they definitely ha- share some common traits. Her maiden name was Spencer. The Ooh. Spencers, um, if that sounds familiar to you, Princess Diana's maiden name was also Spencer. Maybe you've Prince- heard of her. Maybe you've heard of Diana Spencer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Princess Diana is like a great, great niece, uh, or however many great niece of this duchess. And their lives have a lot of, they run a lot of parallels to each other. Mm -hmm. They um, are often compared to each other. And as we get into the story, you'll probably see why. (laughs) The Spencers are a super old, noble English family. Her father was an earl, so it makes her mom a countess. So she's already growing up in a bougie situation. It was a good start to life. 
Yeah, and her parents were actually like in love, which yes. we don't really hear about that much. No, her parents were a love match. His the dad actually married down quite a bit. Like she didn't have any titles or anything. And so they didn't know if their marriage would be approved. So they married in secret, which is just, it's just refreshing to hear about a married yeah, couple right. who love each other. <laughs> yeah, right. History isn't always a bag of dicks. Not always. <laughs> she grew up in a palace called Althorpe, which is also where Princess Diana grew up. By all accounts, it just seems like it was a really happy childhood. Her, yeah. her parents never cheated on each other. Which is, again, again, like a breath of fresh air. An earl that doesn't have a mistress and a bunch of illegitimate children. It was, it was almost controversial. (laughs) Yeah, right. And they were like openly super affectionate to each other. Yeah. So that, again, not very typical back then, but Mm -hmm. very, a very good role model as to what, uh, you know, a loving relationship would be. And her parents really doted on her, especially her mother. Her mother's name was also Georgiana. Her mother called her baby G or little G, which I like. And that's what I've called her through most of my research, just because it's Mm -hmm. easier to say and it's cute. Her mother would like openly be like, well, this is my favorite child. (laughs) What, what, what is that all about? I know they tend to do that back then. Like they are openly saying who their favorite child is. Well, we, uh, I'm trying to think who else. Definitely Eleanor of Aquitaine. Her and her Didn't husband Kath- each had a Catherine favorite Didn't Catherine de Medici child. do that too? Oh, maybe. That seems like a Kathy move. Definitely wasn't her daughter. She didn't like her daughter. Like your, your other sibling, like, yeah, fuck me, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so unfair. They would just openly be like, oh, yeah, baby G, she's the favorite. <laughs> and the other two kids, they had, she had a brother and a sister, and they're just both like, well, okay, cool, mom. I <laughs> love you too. Good talk. Uh-huh. <laughs> she had a really great education. She spoke four languages and she started writing poetry at a really young age. That's one cool thing I really like about her with a lot of our queens were like, um, we don't really know their thoughts on things because maybe they didn't leave anything written. Like with Ronna Bologna, who we did last time, there's like nothing mm-hmm. in her hand written. Baby G writes so many letters and so much poetry and so many diaries we have so much surviving from her so i think that's super cool yeah because a lot of times we're just going on hearsay and what you know the rumor mill was now we have it out of the horse's mouth so yes. it's important and though there still will be plenty of rumors about her don't worry. yeah hold oh, <laughs> no, no yeah that does not mean she's immune from rumors <laughs> She was a really good student. She made really great marks. Um, Her parents were big patrons of the arts. And so they would hold like art showings at their house. They would host plays and operas at their house. Um, So she grew up with a, you know, a good like fine arts education, which Mm -hmm. she loved, which that sounds, I wish my parents would have held operas at our house. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean we, get, we get drunk and sing all the time at my mom's house. So right. That kind of counts, right? Yeah, so she's living like this super bougie life where she was constantly loved and showered with affection and attention. Mm-hmm. So she develops this need to be constantly showered with attention <laughs> and positive affirmation. Like to the point where it's unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely not normal. Look, I get it. I love I love attention and positive affection as well. You, Katie? Ne- you? I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm needy. <laughs> 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 but our girl, Baby G, took it to a whole different level. It just became like she needed it to function. She needed attention and positive feedback to do anything yeah yeah basically that her parents were the air for her lungs yes <laughs> the air that she breathed. she lived and that's probably why she was such a good student because she knew that her parents would give her you know praise her for it there was the this air one- that she the air that she breathes reminds me sorry about space baseballs where he has the peri air <laughs> like the peri and he smells the in space balls Oh, it's a classic. Sorry, sidetrack. It's okay. <laughs> uh, when when G was about eight, her parents went on vacation to Italy and left her behind with her grandmother. And she was wrecked. She was convinced she had done something to upset her parents. And that's why they left her. And like the grandmother wrote to the mom just being like, I have never seen a child so 
anxious in my life. It's like, your kid is extra. Your kid is freaking <laughs> out. Because just literally in her little eight-year-old mind, she's like, I must have pissed off my parents. So they've left and they're never coming back. Well, I, I think like, I know some kids that when their parents leave the home to go like do something together, or, you know, when parents leave and leave their children with like a, a babysitter or something. I've seen kids like have full on meltdowns. Yeah, like, no, I feel like that's more leaves. like two or three year olds. Yeah, but I mean, it's it, it it's that sort of like yeah. anxiety, scared, sad, but she's eight fucking years old. Yes, <laughs> but this poor baby just thinks my parents have left me because I've done something wrong and- Needy. Very needy. <laughs> yeah. This girl, grandma, in grandma's letter, she was basically like, can I give her a Xanax? <laughs> 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 Ye <laughs> old Xanax. <laughs> she needs to chill. The rest of her childhood is pretty normal. So we're going to kind of fast forward a little bit and introduce the Duke of Devonshire. Devonshire. <clears throat> However, Devonshire? De- Devonshire. Devonshire? Fuck that dude. Fuck that dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's literally in the dictionary when you look up the Duke of Devonshire, it says fuck that dude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whenever I, because I watched the movie years and years ago, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking, because like one time I was in a playwriting class in college, and I wrote just like this very bad character, and the teacher was like, you know, you need to give characters more depth. Nobody's all bad. You know, you need to give them more facets to their personality. And I remember when I saw this movie, when it first came out, remembering what that teacher said, being like, they need to give this dude some more layers. Like he, nobody can really be that bad. But the more I research him, I'm like, fuck that guy. Yeah, he really, he really is that bad. Like, he sucks. (laughs) So his name is William Cavendish and he's the fifth Duke of Devonshire. And this family is like old, 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 noble AF. Because in in like England and most of like Europe, your clout with your family comes from like how how long you've been a noble family. How yeah. old your family is. And and his family, like his however many times great father, great grandfather, whatever, was also named William because they're really inventive with names. Yeah. Um, he assisted Henry VIII in the dissolution of the monasteries. So there's that. So that's how they got their money. That's how they got started getting like all their titles. Have you heard of a woman named Bess Hardwick, Nathan? Yes, I have. <laughs> that is this Duke's like great, great, great grandmother. Oh. Yeah, his, cause you know, Bess Hardwick married a whole bunch of times. She's famous for, like, having been married many times. And her second husband was this Devonshire guy. He was her favorite. He's, like, the only one that she married for love. And so her children with him were her favorite. Because, again, it's just a thing they did back then. And they're the ones that, like, inherited all her money and titles and stuff. William, the Duke of Devonshire, is eight years older than little G. So when they meet, she's 16 and he's... 24 and he's actually considered the most eligible bachelor in the country like he's he's like jfk jr yes oh my god jfk jr was so handsome have you seen caroline kennedy's son he looks so much like jfk oh yeah i did yeah 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 Yeah. crazy oh my goodness okay focus katie (laughs) um yeah so they're eight years apart which in the grand scheme of things we've definitely like right now, it seems creepy to be like, she's 16, he's 24. But back then, think he, they could have been trying to marry her off to a much older man. Much older. We're talking like 40. Yeah. So <laughs> 24, 24 and rich as hell, not such a bad deal for baby G. Yeah. So the Duke is looking for a wife and Georgina is just starting to make her presence known in society. And she's like, super popular because she's really pretty and she's stylish and she's super sweet but most of all her public manners are on fucking point she took those etiquette classes fucking seriously yes because again she wanted to please her parents and everybody was like commenting on how well behaved she was and so her mother would be like i'm you know you did really well today and she's like 
lady boner. You know, she's so happy yeah. as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, and so it's like everybody is talking about that little Spencer girl and how she's going to make a great society wife for, for some rich dude. Yeah. So, like, enter the Duke. <laughs> <laughs> so the Duke starts paying more calls to the Spencers on, more often, and Mama and Papa are so fucking stoked that their daughter is being considered like as a candidate to the most eligible bachelor in the country. So the psychological thing happens with uh, Georgiana where she convinces herself that she's in love with the Duke, but no, I think she's just in love with making her parents so happy by marrying yeah. so well. That's it. She is definitely a people pleaser. Like she's one of those yes. people that is a people pleaser. Yes. For sure. <laughs> I think anyone who's been 16 years old can possibly remember like you just being so obsessed with the idea of, I don't know, like maybe if you're like really into like a celebrity or something when you're a little kid and yeah. just convincing yourself that like, oh my God, I'm in love with this celebrity. And I feel like that's kind yeah. of what she's, going through yeah because they've only they only met like a handful of times it's not like they knew each other you know so right. she really wasn't in love with him she was in love with the idea but like all yeah, her okay. letters and all of her diary entries do say that you know she loves him um i don't think she really understands what an adult relationship is though yet no because he like doesn't even talk to her that much no. <laughs> he's such a dick honestly i believe this was less about the Duke or becoming a Duchess and it's just parental approval. Kind of like we already said. So there were red flags from the beginning. And honestly, I was talking to my friend um, that runs the blog F yeah History yesterday. And we were talking about Hortense Mancini and we were like, I understand that it was important to set your daughter up with like a rich guy to take care of her for the rest of her life. But Surely, why didn't they do any kind of personality tests? Why was that not in the equation whatsoever when making a match back then? Because if their personalities would have meshed just a little bit better, maybe they, there would be less family scandal. Like, yeah, it's very frustrating to me that they don't t- see any red flags and just how little these two have in common. You know, she needed the constant approval and she also needed companionship. And the Duke, he's not really a people person. No, not at all. Like whenever you throw a party, he's the one that runs off to his room to watch television. Yeah, no. Later on, his daughter and his, her like older years wrote in her diary that like, well, when I go to visit dad, I have to bring my dogs because that seems to be the only thing he'll talk to me about. No, yeah, I I, re- I read that in my research too, is that he, he was just really obsessed with dogs for some reason. Yeah, that was the only thing, and like, his own daughter, that's the only thing she was like, if I don't bring my dogs, he doesn't talk to me, so. Wow. He just, was not, he, he just didn't, and they were also brought up so differently, where... Mm-hmm. G's family is like loving and um, a close-knit family. His mother died when he was really young. And so his father, the Duke, sent his children to like be raised by family, like relatives. And they're just these really aristocratic noble families that don't, they don't, they're not lovey. (laughs) They're not Mm close-knit. It's a very isolated kind of childhood. It's, their upbringing would have just been so much more about like, sh- like kind of more like at a military school than with your family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a joy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sounds, like sounds so much lovely. Fun. <laughs> and then his dad died when he was uh, in his early teens. So he became the Duke and suddenly like he wouldn't even be old enough to drive a car these days, but he's got all the responsibilities of being a fucking duke at a young age, mm-hmm. which I think isolated him from his peers even more. So it's just very, very different family yeah. systems. Like G got to see her mom and dad be affectionate, whereas this guy didn't even get to see his mom and dad together. So yeah, he doesn't know what a healthy relationship like 
G had with her parents. He exactly. doesn't understand that. Well, you could also argue that G's upbringing wasn't the healthiest because <laughs> she, uh, yeah, a little too much. <laughs> yeah, though I mean, I don't know. That is that could be a weird argument that we could have. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're we're not saying don't love your children. <laughs> yeah but what we're trying to get at is that her household was filled with warm love affection and his household was like duty obligations respect yeah so it was like two completely different i imagine it was very much like children are seen and not heard type thing and Mm -hmm. fun question mark anecdote one thing that i read is like so soon after their engagement they were at like a ball together and georgiana loved dancing and socializing and partying and so she was dancing all night and then i guess just like got overheated uh, which i'm sure is not hard and all those layers they had to wear and all the corsets (laughs) and she nearly passed out and so um, her friends like took her off the dance floor and like got her water and like made her catch her breath. And somebody like went and told the Duke like, hey, your fiance like almost passed out. Do you want to go check on her? And he was just like, why, why? And they're like, Cause she's your fiance and she's not well. And he was just sort of like, I mean, but, but why would I go check on her? Why do I want to go look at somebody who almost passed out? And that should have been like, she needs so much love and attention and he does not care. Yeah, I know. It's like the opposite. She oh wants like someone to run to her bedside and give her flowers and a puppy. Yes. <laughs> she, she, in her mind, how that would have went is, because who knows, maybe she almost passed out for a cry for attention from him. You know, like, yeah. in her mind, she wants somebody to rush over and be like, are you okay? What can I get you? Oh my God, my life mm-hmm. would be meaningless if you passed out or whatever. <laughs> Needless to say, their engagement was a huge fucking deal. Mm. Um, it was like the society section in the London newspapers at the time all knew about it. We're all talking about it. And they could not get enough of this fresh new couple. Like, they're young. She's super fashionable and beautiful from a good family. He just happens to be the most eligible bachelor in the country. So this is like some a this celebrity shit. Yes. <laughs> A-list. Sure. Who who would we compare it to? What A-list celebrity couple would this be? Mm-hmm. Maybe like remember when George Clooney first started dating his wife? Oh. That, that was would such be a, a big good deal. One. Yeah. They would be all over ye old TMZ. Ye old TMZ was all fucking <laughs> over it. <laughs> <laughs> so Duke William is completely indifferent about all this, but obviously Georgina is loving the fucking attention oh and my god she's just like i could just imagine her every morning like running down to get the newspaper to be like what did they write about me what did they write yeah. about me you oh know? totally <laughs> oh totally this is gonna be a theme if you haven't figured that mm-hmm, out yet mm-hmm. <laughs> so the two are married on g's 17th birthday in a small and private ceremony and Georgina had noticed how you know duke willie's distant demeanor had been getting bad but her dad was kind of the same way in public. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was like kind of a little standoffish, but then once you get him home, he's a little warmer and friendlier. So she's thinking, hey, I, I don't know the Duke that well. Once we live together, he's he's going to open up to me like, like dad does whenever, you know, he's at yeah. home and chills. And, and I'm going to make him love me. <laughs> I'm going to make him love me. Oh, baby, no, you won't. No, you <laughs> won't. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gee, you in danger, girl. <laughs> the wedding was so over-publicized, and it was just like, it was like a royal wedding. Like, you know how people line up and just like fanfare? It was like mm-hmm. getting that kind of hype. So they ended up telling the newspapers, oh, they're getting married on June 9th. But then they got married on two days earlier on June 7th, just March. to like throw them off and so that they could have like a private ceremony because uh, G's parents were literally concerned for her safety. I would be too. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the ooh, lots yeah. of people being around like that. I don't know about that. Yeah, there was only eight people in attendance, like her immediate family and his immediate family. 
it was on her 17th birthday. I don't know why they, that just seems weird getting married on your birthday, but whatever. They avoided the media frenzy. Very sneaky. (laughs) So if, if Georgiane and her family were thinking that this marriage was just going to like solve the personality divide between these two, they were fucking wrong. Wrong. (laughs) Three days after their wedding, they were to be presented to the king and queen as members of high nobility. And that's King George the Third, if you're paying attention. You know, AKA the white, the white guy from Hamilton. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and his wife, Queen Charlotte. So first of all, they were like three hours late because the Duke was off like hunting with his friends and he didn't really want to go being a little bitch. Yeah. But G wasn't letting that bother her. She she wore the dress she wore to her wedding and she was just dripping in Jules de la Guanza. Yes. <laughs> And one newspaper wrote that there was more people there to see the newly con- married couple than had been in attendance of uh, the king's last birthday party. So, <laughs> King got that's, a little pissed off. That's like the <laughs> level of popular she was. Like people yeah, were just sure. so obsessed with this young, good-looking, rich, new couple. And like one newspaper noted that you know the Duchess looks stunning and beautiful and perfect, and the Duke looks bored. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Because he was. He was so bored. He hated this shit. He hated all, like, being presented at court and, like, all the uh, attention. He was just sort of like, what's the big deal? Why do people want to see us? I don't. He did not get it. It was 100% G's jam. She was. (laughs) Loving it. Loving every second of it. (laughs) Yeah, she's meant to be a duchess. He's not meant to be a duke Mm -mm, (laughs) at mm -mm. all. At all. So soon after the marriage, G and the Duke head off to the Duke's country house. And this place is called Chatsworth House. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Yeah, please I stop at- what you're doing and Google. <laughs> it is beautiful. And if you have seen the movie, The Duchess, um, the big staircase in their palace in that show um, is modeled after what this place looks like. And oh my God, it's so beautiful. So... Mm-hmm. Stop, search, Chatsworth House. Welcome back. Wasn't that pretty? (laughs) So G's parents came along and the Duke's two brothers and one sister came along with them. While there, the Duchess of a Great Manor is expected to like fulfill those like courtly duties, you know. Yeah. And G was was not really prepared for that. There was this, there was this one thing, like some people showed up one morning and the Duke had went hunting with his bros. Georgiana didn't know she was supposed to like feed them breakfast or offer them like refreshments or something. Cause they stopped by unannounced and she just didn't know that was the protocol. And basically like the Duke's brother and sister were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why didn't you do that? And she was like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. And they were like, oh my God, who is this backwater hick that has joined our family like it was this big fucking deal and it was just guys if she doesn't know she's been she's been duchess for like three days give her a fucking break you know right it's kind of ridiculous yeah and they're also like and why aren't you pregnant yet (laughs) yeah it's like it's been three fucking days i might be pregnant i don't know (laughs) how could i know right right after the breakfast debacle um her parents left chatsworth like two mornings later without telling her and so of course little baby g is just thinking that she has embarrassed her family so bad with the breakfast debacle that they've like abandoned her. She was so so needy. needy. And she was so fucking miserable like for days and just like gripped with anxiety and just like, oh my God, I've upset my parents. But really sadly what it is is her mom had suffered a miscarriage and they didn't want, they didn't want to tell her that that's why they were leaving because they didn't want to stress her out more than she was already stressed out. But then by leaving without telling her, it stressed her out. (laughs) It stressed her out. Yeah, the Duke did nothing to make her feel better about how she felt, like the shitty situation and the crappy emotions she was feeling. And in fact, they didn't really even see each other all day. Like he would go fuck off with his bros pretty much 
All day. Such a dick. I right? hate him so much. You would just be hunting and riding <laughs> basically all day. And she'd be like hosting people, trying to learn how to like be in this kind of society alone. Again, she doesn't have any help. She hasn't gone to Duchess school. And they'd usually like not even eat dinner together. Uh, and they had separate rooms, but every night he would come to her room for a fuck because he's got to get those airs. That's like mm-hmm. the one thing that he's like, no, you were here to make me my babies. We got to, mm-hmm. let's get on this. Yeah, it sounds really lonely. It does sound really lonely. I know. Like, after that time at Chatsworth, they, they come back to their place in London where she felt a little bit more at home. Yeah, at least she knows the town, you know? Exactly. Um, This palace was called the Devonshire House, but it's not there anymore. It'd be gone. It'd be gone. So we can't tell you to Google it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like apartments or something now. Yeah. Um, But the Devonshire House could hold up to 1,200 people in the ballroom. Right. 1,200 people. That's a fuckload of people. That's a fuck, And that's just the ballroom. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) So this is a feature that G is definitely going to be utilizing. <laughs> Absolutely. She threw herself into society life hard. She started hosting parties all the time, and she never turned down an invitation, which sounds exhausting. Yeah, it does. Throwing yeah. one party is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and she liked to gamble and drink like a lot. <laughs> this will become a problem, but you know, that was just a big part of like the society parties back then is that you'd gamble, but you weren't expected to gamble as much as she did. And addiction is sadly going to be like a running theme in her life. And it started here in the early days of her marriage. Maybe there's a correlation. Maybe she was super unhappy. I don't know. <laughs> But imagine, like, she'd be going to, like, these fancy operas, and um, there's all these protocols and all these rules for somebody of her status, and she'd be going alone because it wasn't fashionable for wives and husbands to, like, spend too much time together. That's awful. (laughs) To which I think the Duke was, like, fine by me. (laughs) (laughs) So she's, she's like super nervous at this point. Yeah. yeah like keep, keep in mind, she's still like a teenager. Like she's, she's a kid still. Yeah. And yeah. so she's drinking, she's doing like liquid current, you know, having pre-gaming before they leave the house, maybe taking one for the road in the carriage, you know, like to calm her nerves. And this, this turns into a drinking problem. Mm-hmm. At one of those events, it was either at an opera or a comedy play or something. She she and her friends had been drinking, and they dared her to get up on stage and dance, and she did. And her mother wrote her the next day. Because, you know, the gossip at this time, of course it got to her mom, like, that night. And her mother wrote her the next day being like, oh, my God, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Which wasn't appropriate. <laughs> was an appropriate yeah. response. <laughs> yeah, her mom's basically like, "Bitch, you need to cut that alcohol." Yeah, off maybe of your we diet. Should, maybe we should drink less. <laughs> That's probably good advice. So enough about drinking problems, and let's talk about some good news because she's pregnant. Yay! And she's thinking a baby will fix my marriage. Yeah, right? Like so many women do. I know. And when she tells the Duke, he finally starts showing her some fucking attention. Yes. He's and she, being she, nice to her. Right? And so she writes to her mother that the Duke is actually like being affectionate to her. And he's like tending to her every need. And she's like, finally, it's happening. We're clicking. We're finally falling in love. I, I mean, it's still pretty early on in their marriage. So she still has some hope which is Aww, kind of adorable. But, that's cute. You know. That's cute. So back then, they don't really know what we do about pregnancy now and substance abuse. So she was still drinking pretty regularly and possibly also using opiates, which is not going to be good for a fetus. 
as doctors as doctors might tell you yeah (laughs) (laughs) but she wants to show off her baby bump she wants to see what you know everybody talking about how glowing she's looking in the newspapers oh absolutely she was oh yes my pregnancy glow oh yeah my hair my hair looks super long and long yes yes, tell me more Yeah, and to her, attention equals love. Basically. Yes, and she's so, not, yeah, and she, um, she's finding that this pregnancy is getting her more love at home, more love in public. So mm-hmm. she wants to show it off. So she's still going to parties and drinking and gambling, and she is apparently bad at whatever games she's playing to gamble at, because she amasses this huge debt. 3,000 pounds, which is about the equivalent of $300,000 today. Holy shit. Yeah. For reference, her, each year, like her allowance for like her spending money for stuff like this for the whole year is 4,000 pounds. (laughs) Yeah. So she can't pay this off. You know how today sometimes when a woman has a baby, the husband might get her what's called a push present? Like, yeah, like a piece car, of jewelry. Yeah. A jewelry, something yeah. like that. So it was pretty customary back then that after you have your, your heir, after you give birth to a son, you get some kind of, you get like maybe um, a piece of land that you get the incomes from or something. Um, you get some kind of push present, then it's usually a financial gain independently. And so she was like, it's fine. You know, after this baby's born, it's going to be a boy. I'm going to get my bonus. I'm going to get my push present. I'm going to be able to pay this off. But sadly, she miscarries. Yeah. And it's it's so sad because the Duke blames her. The Duke's, he says two really, really mean things. He says, uh, you know, he Straight out, I was like, well, you're partying so much. What did you expect? And then he suggests that she miscarried out of spite. Ouch. Like she was partying so much. He was like, well, you were partying so much and going out so much and exhausting yourself. It almost makes me think that you were doing this just to spite me. Yeah, so that second thing is awful. The first thing about her partying too much, in in hindsight, you might be right. Is accurate. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her drinking and and partying too much really did not help. But you don't say that she did it intentionally because her whole job is wanting to have an heir. Like, that's the whole point. Why would she do it intentionally? Like, I just, when I read that, I was just like, oh, suck my dick, Duke. Like, fuck you. And even the newspapers pick up on her and start blaming her for partying too much. And so now she's like super in debt and <laughs> that push present ain't coming anytime soon, honey. Mm-mm. So she has to go to her parents and ask for a loan, which is mortifying. Oh, I bet. And her parents are like, how the fuck do you owe 3,000 pounds? And she's just like, oh, I'm just doing a little gambling here or there. And for the rest of her, for the rest of her life, her mother would like write to her, and like every letter her mother wrote her, it was like, "Are you still gambling? Because you know <laughs> this is a problem for you. Maybe don't do that anymore." And so they agree to give her the loan, but then they're like, "What? Why isn't the Duke helping you out?" And she's like, "Yeah, if we could not tell William, that would be great." And her parents are like, "Gee, I don't fucking know about this. This seems, which I mean." To be fair, in a marriage, you should be open and honest about the financial problems you put Uh the family in. Um, So I kind of get that, but she wasn't expecting it, and they snitched on her. They told the Duke. Snitches get stitches. I Uh, know, but I kind of see where uh, they're coming from as well. Yeah. So the Duke pays them back immediately and then doesn't talk to G for like a week or something. Ooh, the silent treatment. I hate the silent treatment so bad. That is my, oh, I would rather have a knockdown drag out fight than have somebody give me the silent treatment. I just cannot stomach that. Like it gives me such anxiety for someone not to just fucking tell me what you're thinking. Tell me how you're feeling. 
Please never give me the silent treatment. Name. Yes, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like I haven't answered Facebook messages before. You've been like Nathan. Are you alive? Are you are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? Are you not talking to me? <laughs> and you're like, okay. I was taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, it's a really dark period for our girl. But then, perfectly timed to add insult to injury, she's informed that the child that a child is joining the household. It's a little girl named Charlotte that's going to be being playing family with them basically oh my so gosh. the duke had a long time mistress uh also named charlotte because real clever with names exactly and she had suddenly passed away charlotte that is uh this is a mistress that georgina had kind of ex- suspected at the time but she really didn't have any evidence and until there was a baby and she's like well i guess my suspicions were right so she ah! ends up she ends up raising this kid as like her own basically you know she takes the bastard into her house and oh. well what i need to take into my mouth is a refill on my drink so why don't we take a quick break and then we'll come back and see how g handles this new role of being a stepmom So we're back, and yeah, now G's got a little girl in the house, and basically, this part of the movie was pretty accurate. The Duke was just kind of like, you don't really even have to be a part of her life. If you don't want to be, you can just pretend like she's not here. The house is big enough for you to not have to interact with her, but... I think what happens next gives us um, insight into her character of how she just so badly wanted to give love and receive love so bad because she just completely accepts this little girl. Mm -hmm. She hands on, raises her, makes sure that she gets an education, makes sure that she feels loved and secure in her new home. I mean, her mother just died. Yeah, and I, right. And I don't think the Duke is going to be very doting on this little girl either. Mm-mm. So I just think that's really cool that she was just like, no, I'm not going to have this little girl feel as alone as, alone as I do, you know? Yeah. And so G ends up writing her mom and being like, OMG, she's just like the cutest little girl in the world. And she's so like sweet and she's well-mannered. And her mother is actually embarrassed for her. And it's like, OMG, please don't tell anybody. Don't tell anyone else. Like, you've got this bastard living in your house that you're taking care of her. Don't don't do that. And and I don't think the Duke and Duchess just went around telling everyone about Charlotte and how she ended up here. But they also didn't appear to like hide her. It wasn't a secret, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I just think that's really cool because any other child in uh, Charlotte's situation could have ended up with a really spiteful stepmother or somebody that treated her like shit. And so I just I just love that G was like, "Nope, you're a part of the family now," and like really embraced her Um, for sure. So G's recovered from her miscarriage and she's also recovered from the shock of her stepdaughter. Yeah. So what's next? She goes back into society and she goes back into it hard. Hard. She Mm. becomes an absolute fashion icon. We cannot talk about the Duchess of Devonshire without talking about her fashion, like her impact in the world of fashion at this time. Oh, hell yeah. Like, please do yourself a favor and Google her and look at the Wikipedia picture. She's wearing a big old hat. That is a big ass fucking hat. That hat, hat. (laughs) it like, I don't know how it's staying on her big ass wig either. Like, it's so much hat and so much hair. I don't know. (laughs) She's got a big old fucking burn on it. Like, Mm -hmm. what the hell is that? (laughs) Right? Back then, big hair. I mean, if you think the big hair of the 80s was over the top, they got nothing on these bitches. Oh, Bigger the hair, no, closer no. to God. Well, then Georgiana was a fucking saint because <laughs> her hair, 
she would wear these hair, like big hairstyles were in fashion, but she just took it to the next level. And she would wear these three foot tall wigs. Yes, Gaga. So <laughs> she would have to, in her like carriage, going to the opera or to a party or whatever, she would have to sit on the floor of the carriage. Oh my God, that is a little excessive. Because like if she sat on the <laughs> chairs, her hair, her hair would get messed up because it would hit the top. And I'm just trying to imagine how do you like climb into the carriage, get in and out of the carriage late, like in a ladylike manner. <laughs> like, Without like crawling into it or I don't right? know how. I, I don't, have no idea. That either that or maybe they took like open carriages. But uh, maybe so. What I but read, it- what I read said that she had to sit on the floor of the carriage. Yeah, and she had to have like a team of like ten people to get her ready. <laughs> ten people, but bitch is turning heads. Bitch I mean, is turning heads everywhere she goes. She's turning heads, but the heads are turning very slowly because they can't move that fast with three foot and like twenty pounds of shit <laughs> on their head. Because I think we talked about it a little bit in the Marie Antoinette episode. They would like put this ridiculous shit on their hair, like boats, and yeah. <laughs> They would just put like, they'd like have deck, you know, decor on their head, like little figurines, like the glass menagerie all up on your hair. Like it was the ridiculous. manger scene. Yes. <laughs> but whatever hairstyle she was doing, the next day, everyone was copying it. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was basically like Regina George in Mean Girls. Yes. It was very like much she like she had the holes in her bra, like she had yeah. the holes in her shirt to show her bra, and then everybody's and then doing everybody, it. Yes, it was very much like that. Um, I wore camo and flip flops because I saw Regina George wearing camo and flip flops. That was basically what people were saying <laughs> about the Duchess of Devonshire. <laughs> like, I, I wore a nest in my hair because I saw the Duchess wearing a nest in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> So she made it really, she started wearing these ostrich feathers in her hair, but they were like from this really rare ostrich or something. And (laughs) it became like, since it was kind of a rare bird to find that I don't think was indigenous to England, like it became an absolute like panic, the women in society trying to get these ostrich feathers to wear in their hair. And they would like literally be like, paying like a year's worth of salary to like get these ostrich feathers and it got so bad and like so competitive that the queen actually made it um banned ostrich feathers from the palace (laughs) people come to the palace could not wear ostrich it was called the the feather headdress affair wow (laughs) wow So during this, oh, sorry. You go. I've been talking too much. So so during this time of being the height of fashion, she actually strikes up a friendship with none other than Marie Antoinette. You know, like you do. Like, like, as one does. So the Devonshires took a trip to Versailles one summer and the two met and just like bonded immediately. I mean, they did have a lot in common. Yeah. Marie's marriage was probably slightly happier than G's, but not much at all. Yeah. And they both had fertility issues. They both took up lots of real estate, newspapers, gossip columns. They both liked drinking and gambling. And obviously, fashion, 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 fashion. (laughs) Jinx! (laughs) Uh, To the left. Uh, Fashion. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Nathan Bowie. (laughs) <laughs> strangely so, enough at this time when uh georgina and marie were becoming friends france and england were actually like about to go to war they well, they kind of already been at war with like the american revolutionary war mm-hmm. um but they were about to like actually in europe go to war start fighting and so g is like well i need to do something to um drum up patriotic support So she mimics this outfit that's like a soldier's outfit, but like makes it military, but make it fashion for women is basically. She wore wore camo and flip-flops. She wore camo and (laughs) flip-flops. 
And <laughs> so she would go to like the military bases and wear that and just try to like, you know, drum up, like, uh, you know, raise the morale of the troops. And so all the women started wearing camo and flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> surprise surprise yeah. so the dude goes to live like at these army camps where there's the men that he's supposed to lead uh she really thought it was important to show her husband i mean excuse me she really thought it was important to show her support of her husband and the cause so she goes as well so well it wasn't common for women to join it also wasn't unheard of mm-hmm. either i mean we talked about Agrippina yeah Agrippina did that forever ago yeah um but the duke is honestly annoyed that she's here like (laughs) well because she just she just draws all he feels like she's drawing the attention from what really matters you know training Mm -hmm. his troops and the war and instead is making it all about oh fashion and parties you know to to him (laughs) he's just like oh why is she here yeah so there's this woman named Lady Jersey who ran with G's inner circle and they had been friends for like years, but never like super close BFF. She was actually the mistress. She goes on to be the mistress of the Prince of Wales. She's nice. actually really interesting. We should look into her some more. Oh. Yeah. So Lady Jersey sleeps with the Duke. Um, and then she like brags about it in front of everybody. Lady Jersey's kind of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> like, I don't think the Duke did this specifically to hurt her. It may have been like a passive aggressive thing where it was like, I don't want her here. So I want to make it clear that I don't want her here. Or it may have just been him being like a dude thinking with his dick. But Lady Jersey, it was like almost, at least how I read it from a book that wasn't about her. So maybe the narrative is different than if I researched Lady Jersey herself. But the book I read made it seem like she felt like sleeping with other women's husbands was like a sport. Mm. Yeah. And so she, and so like the next day at like tea or whatever, she's like bragging about it to like all the ladies that are there visiting their husbands and so oh my god that's not that's not chill especially since they're supposed to be friends you know yeah and from what we know it really doesn't look like she ever really brought it up to the duke Mm-mm. like she, i just think she was like super defeated and pretty much yeah. just like runs with her tail between her legs back to devonshire yeah um, like she's just like I, I okay i get your message loud and clear i'll leave and Oh, I hate that. Like, I just hate that for her. I hate a lot of things in this story for her, but that that really broke my heart for her. Yeah, being stuck in a shitty marriage. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, sound- not, that's not great. And having no agency of your own and no way to get out of the shitty marriage. Yeah, sounds bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. And soon after she gets back to Devonshire, she finds out that she's pregnant, but she suffers another miscarriage. Ah! She actually probably had more miscarriages than we're going to bring up. We don't really know because, you know, she wasn't really putting those in the society pages, but she had Mm. several miscarriages um, in this, around this time. Yeah. So things are bad for G right now. Understatement. (laughs) Yeah. So at this point, she may have developed an eating disorder (laughs) because the papers started noting uh, her fluctuation in weight. So giving me very Princess Diana and for Cece vibes here. Yes, yes, sure. that, that definitely, I definitely see so much parallels. Like we've never studied Princess Diana, but she's such a big part of pop culture that it's hard not to know a lot about her life. And we know that she was in a marriage with a man who didn't love her very much and who, and then she became more famous than him and the pressure of it made her develop an eating disorder to stay beautiful and need attention from and need approval from everybody. So yeah, they talk about like, and uh, her mom would like write letters being like, I'm worried about you. Cause like one day she would like eat, 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 like everything in sight. And then she wouldn't eat for like three weeks. It's like barely eat for like three weeks. And it was like, oh, I know. So it's during this time that she meets a man named Charles James 
Fox and they're like distant cousins and Fox is the leader of the Whig party. Mm -hmm. So he would be instrumental in much of Georgiana's upcoming life. And she became really interested in politics at this point, um, specifically the cause of the Whig party, which was that they were against the absolute monarchy and they were more for a constitution, you know, more rights for the people. Can't yeah, be and they were the ones, because a, a lot of people don't, we don't really learn this in um, American history when we learn about the Revolutionary War. There were a lot of people in England that were for like being like, just let the Americas go. They don't, they want to be separate, let them be separate. And the Whig party, uh -huh. you know, in school, we're just taught like, England wanted to stay, and so we told them to fuck off, America. Um, but <laughs> the Whig Party was like, no, if they want to be separate, let them be separate. It's fine. Mm. We got India or whatever. Yeah, they even had the Whig Party here in the United States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They did, yeah, for a short time. And so whenever she connected with Fox, he was just sort of like, you're smart you're funny, you're popular, people like hearing you talk, people are interested in what you have to and she's say. she's like, please tell me more. Please tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you were so much more than a hairstyle. You could be doing so much good for this country if you just kind of refocused. And she needed that. She's oh just, yeah he's basically <sighs> showering her with the affection that she's hasn't gotten from her husband yeah and that she's he's telling her like you can be more than just like what shows up in the society papers about you and i just feel like no one's ever like yeah she's well educated and her parents were really great to her but no one's really told her praised her for like her intellect and like her this is just a whole politics is a whole new bag for her and i feel like i just i'm so happy for her yeah because she really hits the ground running with the politics thing and at this point there wouldn't have been a lot of women in politics so it's right fucking cool that she's doing that and then so there were rumors that they were having an affair but Katie's shaking her head no, and I don't think so either. No. It was just gossip. It was just rumors. They were just, just close. Rumors. There was somebody yeah. giving her uh, attention. It was somebody being nice to her, <laughs> and so she was... Exactly. And we see this a lot in her life, and there just were too many instances for us to fit all of them, besides the big ones, into like our discussion of her. But whenever she decided someone was her friend and in her inner circle, she was... Ride or fucking die. Oh, yeah. You Absolutely. are in her inner circle. You are her soulmate, and she is going to praise you and always be there for you. She's the best friend anyone could ever ask for. That's why I think people were like, mm, they're really close. And it's like, well, no, she just, that's how she is with everybody. That's how she treats circle. everybody that she's close with. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think, but I don't think they were fucking at all. And also, I don't think she's dumb enough to start having an affair before she's had, you, you have the affair after the air. <laughs> the truth is so true. But I mean, like, really, the Duke never even fucking noticed. He's so aloof and just, just like, clueless. Um, so her confidence is up. And around this time, this novel comes out titled The Sylph. And so it's published, quote unquote, anonymously by the author's name was given as a young lady. <laughs> mm, I think we know someone who likes to write poetry a yes. lot. Who is really well versed. I had to look up what self meant. It's two things. One, it's like a type of hummingbird. And the other one is like something from like mythology, kind of like a ghost. I assume it's more from that because she had like a classical education. It's about a girl who's plucked from obscurity to marry a rich and powerful man. Mm. and it's an unhappy marriage and he cheats mm. on her a lot and she mm. it's about her struggles in society mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 so i don't think 
I think when it came out, everyone knew that she had wrote it, but it just wasn't a done thing in polite society for a duchess to write a novel. About her marriage? Yeah. (laughs) She never like came out and said it, said, hey, I wrote this. And some people do think another lady wrote it, but most people agree that G wrote this book. So she's got her confidence up. She's got a friend. She's putting out books anonymously. One little side note that came in when I was reading about her writing. I had. <laughs> I read. I read this in the outline. I was like, "What? I where would she put that? Where I would don't you put know. This? I don't know where else to put this. And it's not even necessarily about her. It's just in England at the time, um, high society. When they talked about their periods, they referred to it as the prince. <laughs> Ooh, the prince is visiting. The, pr- mm-hmm. the prince is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> prince is coming over any day now. <laughs> I didn't know where else to put this, but I felt like that was a funny anecdote that I couldn't just not mention. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. And now I'm going to start using it whenever I have my period. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so fast forward a little bit. Mm. It's 1782. They've been married for eight years. Uh, That would make her 25, and he's at this point 32. No kids. Big problem. That's a problem. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So they go to the city of Bath. Um, Let's give a a little brief description of Bath is that Bath is the city in England that was named so because in Roman times, the Romans set up their famous Roman baths in like hot springs. So at that time, G's life, they believed that these waters had healing properties. So if you have some kind of ailment, you headed to bath to take a bath. And they also drank the water of the hot springs, I think so also, which is, ugh, so like people just marinating in the hot springs all day and then you drink it, which is nasty. Yeah, yeah, gross. Gross. <laughs> That's what they believed at the time. So they had that way. One, he has gout. Which... I, love, I, I love how that just sounds so dirty. I know. Thir- well, also 32 seems quite young to have gout. But um, so for his gout and for her infertility. And G hated Bath. She thought it was bored. She wrote to her mother in her own words and described Bath as amazingly disagreeable. And yeah. <laughs> I just think there wasn't a whole, there wasn't a whole lot of society. There weren't like parties for her to go to or anything. So she was just fucking bored. Not having it. And like a few <laughs> weeks into their stay in Bath, Georgina writes home to her mother telling her about this woman that she met. And she is uh, the Lady Elizabeth Foster, like my great, 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 great aunt by marriage. Yes. If you're not a Patreon supporter, you might not know Nathan is is related to the Lady Elizabeth Foster. So that means by like marriage two times, I'm related to Princess Diana. That's cool. (laughs) I don't, I don't think, (laughs) I don't think it is Nathan. (laughs) I'm going to strut on into Buckingham Palace and be like, this is my fucking place. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so a quick word about Lady Foster. Um, she was in a very unhappy marriage. We're not going to hold that against my uncle. <laughs> With an Irish lord. Um, they were just very badly matched. So she ended up leaving him. But the father at this point, back in the day, the father had the rights to the children. Mm-hmm. Which, interesting side note, in separations and divorce laws at the time, the husband was still legally required to give his wife money to live off unless they could prove that she was being unfaithful. Yeah. And her asshole husband was not sending her any money, and it doesn't appear she was pushing for the matter too much at all. So this, like, leads me to believe that infidelity had been part of their separation because she wasn't asking for the money. Yeah, I think she had definitely got caught cheating on her husband. Yeah, and I mean, he cheated on her. Oh, yeah, that was like, that was their official reason for separation is that she caught her husband uh, sleeping with her maid. But I think there were a lot more issues at play. Oh, yeah, for sure. But everything happens for a reason. And now Elizabeth Foster, who we're going to call Bess moving forward, has met the Duke and Duchess. And the two have so much in common, you know, like they, Mm -hmm. 
are both from not, they're both in like not very happy marriages to say the least. And Mm -hmm. G has a new best friend. She just feels like she has found a kindred spirit in Bess. I, we can debate it later in the next episode if we think that Bess feels the same way towards her or if she just really likes having a powerful and rich friend. But Bess definitely reciprocated that emotion. Like she made Georgiana feel like she was wanted, like she was needed. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if she felt the same way, but she made G think she felt the same way, definitely. So she's finally found someone that's as needy for friendship as she is. And they click immediately. (laughs) Bonus, the Duke likes her too. Like usually the Duke cannot stand her friends. This one, he's like, well, why don't, why don't you invite the lady Elizabeth, Elizabeth Foster around? She's nice. She's entertaining. And so she's like, oh my God, I found a friend that gets me. And the Duke doesn't hate her. She is just like, this is perfect, right? Wrong. (laughs) So that's where we're going to leave this episode. We'll be back in two weeks to discuss the rest of the duchess's life i hope it, it's, it can only go up from here right yeah <laughs> okay. okay you haven't been listening to queen's podcast very long have you <laughs> all right cheers nathan cheers bitches so thanks for listening if there's something you want to hear just like hit us up you can email us at queen's history podcast at gmail.com find us on twitter we're at queen's underscore podcast we're on soundcloud and stitcher and follow us on itunes at queen's podcast all one word all smushed up queen's podcast um follow us on facebook our intro music is by k sparks featuring beyond belief thanks for letting us use your song guys thanks guys for listening Cheers. bye girl clink, clink. <laughs> Mwah.